Rocket artillery is one of the most destructive weapons on the modern battlefield. The M142 Hemros has recently become the main hitter in this class of weapons, allowing the Ukrainian soldiers to foil the plans made by Russian insane dictators, pushing back the army that he's boasted so much about. In today's video, we're going to be updating you on how much the situation at the front has improved, at least after the appearance of the Hemros, and whether the ATA CMS will be able to change the course of the war. Hemros's are mobile, multiple launch rocket systems, which were developed for the US Army back in the 1990s and have since taken in part in virtually every high intensity conflict in recent decades. By design, they're extremely similar to their older brother, the M270 MLRS, except for the fact that the M142 is mounted on the frame of one of five front FMTVs, or the family of medium tactical vehicles. Instead of a track chassis, this carries a one container of six GM LRS missiles or one ATA CMS versus 12 GM LRSs and two ATA CMSs in the case of the M270. At the same time, the blocks with the ammunition are completely universal, either without any add ons or with any additional software installed on both MLRSs. By January 2016, according to Lockheed, the Hemros has completed 1 million hours in the US military, reaching a 99% degree of operational readiness. Although by 2012, several missiles launched from this system successfully destroyed targets in Afghanistan during the Moss Track operation, the purpose of which was to drive the Taliban out of Miraja and eliminate the last stronghold in the Helmand province. And in November 2015, Hemros was deployed to Iraq, having fired at least 400 missiles at ISIS targets since the early summers of that year. The fight against ISIS using these launchers was only gaining momentum in 2016 when international media and the US State Department had reported that the launchers had worked against Islamic State targets in Syria along the Turkish border. In October 2016, Hemrost was deployed to Kuwara West Airfield south of Mosul, taking part in the Battle of Mosul, a major military campaign to retake the city from ISIS, having successfully captured it in 2014. A year later, the systems were placed in the Syrian Al-Tanif to support rebel forces in the area. In the year 2018, there was also no less success for the M142 whenever American MLRS has had killed 50 militants and Taliban leaders in Musa Akala, Afghanistan. In just 14 seconds, the building in which they were located was struck by three rockets. In that same year, in coordination with the Syrian Democratic Forces, the US military launched up to 30 GM LRS missile strikes against ISIS positions, placing Himras in the Omar oil fields north of militant controlled targets. But the decisive milestones for Himras was without a doubt in 2022, whenever Russia treacherously attacked in Ukraine. And now, let's take a look on Himras in action in Ukraine. This video was obtained from Ukrainian's YouTube channel United24 Media. Go ahead and click on the card on the top of your screen, and also subscribe and support Ukraine in this cruel war. Let's move on. After the US allocated military assistance containing several dozen M142 MLRSs and more than 10 M270 units, Ukraine's allies have shown no intention of slowing down the pace of supporting adding another 18 Hemrosses from above as part of the new $1.1 billion package. After falling into the capable hands of the Ukrainian armed forces, launchers firing a 200-pound warhead at a distance of 50 miles had completely changed the course and direction of the war, negating Russia's numerical advantage. A retired U.S. Army officer who served as the commander of the U.S. Army Europe pointed out aptly, quote, you don't need hundreds of artillery shells to achieve the same effect as a single missile fired from Hemros. The U.S. Army General Mark A. Milley, who's chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff, in turn confirmed that the UAF had successfully hit more than 400 Russian targets with just one Himros, including command posts and ammunition depots. He also stressed that the Ukrainian soldiers quickly mastered both the M142 and GMLRS. These installations allow infantry to deliver insane amounts of fire in just short periods of time, allowing for enemy positions to be destroyed before they leave them. 
Additionally, successful attacks on command facilities destroyed the Russian supply chains, preventing their leadership from providing logistical support and firing. Just look at what happened to the bridges around Kherson in southern Ukraine. But more importantly, the American MLRS had helped to push the Russian occupying troops from various cities and to liberate dozens of settlements, saving thousands upon hundreds of thousands of lives from peaceful Ukrainians. However, in order for the counteroffensive actions of the United Armed Forces of Ukraine to have a greater effect, they needed to be armed with ATACMSs. The GMLRS's family of missiles are effective, but the range ends up becoming a bottleneck when it comes to enemy targets whenever they are located at a distance of more than 100 miles. This is where the ATACMSs come into play, extending that strike range to several hundred miles. To begin with, let's just call what kind of a beast this is and what advantages that it has. The MGM-140 Army Tactical Missile System, or ATACMS, is surface-to-air missile manufactured by Lockheed Martin, which is one of the largest U.S. defense companies. Development for the ATACMS began back in the 1980s, whenever the U.S. Air Force had intended to replace the MGM-52 Lance with a much similar solid propellant missile with a nuclear as well as a chemical or biological warhead. The project was named Corpse Support Weapon System, or CSWS. But the Department of Defense became concerned that the two divisions were developing too many similar missiles with different warheads all at once, and it decided to merge the program with the U.S. Army's Assault Breaker in 1981 with a conventional standoff weapon, or CSW, in 1982. Soon, the new Joint Tactical Mission System, or JTACMS, had encountered resistance from the U.S. Air Force to the idea of creating an air-launched ballistic missile, which is why the service ceased its participation in the non-cruise missiles part of the program, and the project received a new name, ATACMS. March of 1986 was marked by the fact that the LTV had won a contract to develop future missiles designated by the MGM-140. Thanks to the company's earlier experience with previous U.S. military programs, the first test launch of the missiles took place just two years later. The quote-unquote debut of missiles was Operation Desert Storm during the Gulf War, during which the U.S. Army had fired 32 missiles from the M270 MLRS. A little while later, during Operation Iraqi Freedom in the Iraq War, the United States used more than 450 missiles. And by 2015, the number of ATACMSs were used by the American Army in combat operations exceeded over 560 units. In order to increase the safety of its creation on the battlefield, protecting it from the watchful eyes of foreign spies and intelligence officers, the United States came up with an excellent, at the same time ingenious solution to apply a pattern of six circles on the cover of the ATACMS's launch container. You know, kind of like the standard cover of missiles for the MLRS, HIMROS, and MLRS. So, the enemy never knows which of the blocks contains ATACMSs and not GMLRSs, and simply won't be able to single out one or the other installation as a particularly important target for his allies. Like any other family of missiles, the ATACMS, of course, isn't limited to only one representative and exists in several versions at once. Kicking things off, we have the M39, which is the ATACMS Block 1. This is an integral guidance missile that contains 950 M74 anti-personnel and anti-take bombs. The range of the application is anywhere from 15 to 102 miles. The U.S. used 32 of these missiles in Operation Desert Storm and another 379 units as part of Iraqi Freedom. This operation is probably the most versatile as it's more suited for all modifications of the M142 and M270 MLRS. Next up, we have the M39A1, also known as the ATACMS Block 1A. This is a GPS-guided munitions carrying 300 M74 anti-personnel and anti-tank bombs. The range of the application goes anywhere from 12 to 186 miles. And along with the basic M39, the 74 M39A1 missiles were used by the U.S. in Operation Iraqi Freedom. However, unlike the M39, the M39A1 mod can only be equipped with the M270A1 or its variants and the M142. 
Afterwards, we got the M48, or the AT-ACMS Quick Reaction Unit, or QRU. These are GPS-guided missiles, which are equipped with 500 pounds of WDU-18B penetrating high-explosive warheads, which are a part of the U.S. Navy's Harpoon anti-missiles. These were redesigned WAU-23B when used in AT-ACMS, with a range of anywhere from 43 to 183 miles. The U.S. did fire 16 of these missiles at Iraqi targets during our Iraqi war, and 42 more of these munitions were used during Operation During Freedom. Next up, we have the M57 or the ATACMS TACMS 2000. This one is a GPS guided munition with the same WAU 23B warhead as its brother, the M48. The range of this guy has a destruction from anywhere from 43 to 183 miles. Finally, and last but not least, the M57E1, or the ATACMS mod, is, in fact, an improved version of the previously mentioned M39 and M39A1, with an improved engine, software, and hardware responsible for navigation and targeting, as well as a WAU-23B warhead, which is installed from the previous use of the M39 series M74 bombs. Additionally, the updated missiles received an advanced sensor for undetermined in the air. Despite all of this power, if the missiles did have a more perfect successor, then one way or another, they would have to make room or even leave the arena. Unfortunately, this did happen to the AT-ACMS family as well. In 2007, the U.S. Army had terminated the AT-ACMS program due to cost, depriving the service of the ability to replenish supplies, and had launched the SLEP, or Service Life Extension Program, to maintain the extension arsenal. As part of it, the Army is modernizing and replacing the propulsion and navigation systems, cluster munition warheads with the utilitary high explosive fragmentation, and also adds a variety of proximity fuse. And although there is no talk of decommissioning them just yet, the United States does intend to complete the program in 2024 with the introduction of the Precision Strike Missile, or PRSM ammunition, which will replace the ATACMSs. One of their main advantages against the background of their predecessor will be the refinement, since instead of one ATACMS in one block, the M270 or M142 will now be able to be able to install two PRSMs. The new missiles will require an improved propulsion system, due to which they'll be able to fly many times faster and farther, reaching the target at a distance of up to 310 miles. But after the U.S. had withdrew from the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty in August 2019, it was stated that the range for the new missiles of the MLLRS could go beyond the previously announced 310 miles. The appearance of the AT-ACMS and the Armed Forces of Ukraine will become that the very long-arm capability of reaching out to Russian invaders anywhere in Ukraine can become a possibility. And that means cutting off the logistics routes of Russians already affected by the successful work of the Ukrainian soldiers, be that bridges, railway stations, and other strategically important objects. The main question now is when and how much Ukraine will receive this ammunition from the United States. Some military experts and analysts state that the ATACMS has already been transferred to Ukrainian soldiers and that it was used during attacks on a military field in Crimea. However, there has been no confirmation from this White House just yet. Although, if you were to look at it from a rational point of view, do you really think the US and Ukraine needs to notify the enemy about the supply of weapons? At the same time though, almost every transfer of heavy weapons in the US goes through a difficult path from this is impossible since it can provoke the Third World War to this is a complex and long-term process with the final stage being the first test derivatives of which such weapons that Ukraine would get an observation for the success of their use in the battlefield. So far, the Biden administration has been pursuing a cautious and pragmatic policy, but it's obviously making it clear to Russia that nuclear blackmail will end in a nuclear winter, not for the Ukrainians, but for the Russians themselves. So what do you guys think? Will ATACMS be the turn of the war? Let us know in the comments below, and of course, if you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like and subscribe to the channel, as well as hitting that notification bell for more content just like this. Until next time, folks, we'll see you later.